Oh yeah, oh yeah. Man, he ate, he ate it right at shore. I don't think he's hooked by much though, so. Gosh, it's so crazy. I feel like I would have seen that fish. I feel like I would have seen him. He's not hooked by much. Over the last decade, I've caught fish in every corner of North America. From California to Mexico, Florida to New York, and all the way up to Canada, documenting it all on video for you guys. Yes, I got it! But as a video creator and instructor, I have generally left out one of the most important and the largest demographics in the world of fishing, and that is the bank beater, the pond prowler, the shore master. Yeah! In this series, I'm making it my goal to fish more bodies of water than I ever have before, but this time from the bank. My name's Tyler, and this is 100 Ponds. Well, how's it going, folks, and welcome back to TRF. This is my series called 100 Ponds, where I make it my goal to teach you guys everything I learned as I fish 100 ponds. You heard that right. All across the country from where I live here in Texas, all the way up to Michigan where my summer house is, Minnesota where my uncle lives, New York. I'm going to go to California and Utah. I'm going to be everywhere for this series. And a big part of the series is fishing ponds with you guys as subscribers. And so if you have a pond you'd like me to come fish, private or public, really easy to catch fish or really hard, feel free to drop me an email. It'll be down here on the bottom of the screen and uh, let me know where it is and I'd love to come if it's along my travel route I'd love to come fish it with you guys now it's been a good while since I put out my last hunter ponds video I've been doing a lot of stuff in my bass boat the 10 days for a 10 series has been happening I think there's three to four episodes left of that by the time I put this out but I just wanted to hop back into ponds as the winter is coming to a close here in Texas and the pre-spawn is beginning I think it's time to start trying to catch some bass I'm not gonna say it's easy the water is still cold here in Texas but the bass are definitely able to be caught in ponds at this point here in early March. So I say we quit the knickknack, we get on the water and start at pond 27. So Pond 27, we are here right now. It is a beautiful pre-spawn day here in Texas. I will have a video coming out either before or after this one directly uh, talking about whether there is a pre-spawn period in ponds, but it totally depends on the body of water, the structure, water clarity, a lot of things. I'll talk about it in that video. But this pond today has a depth of what? 20 feet? Uh, about 20 feet in the middle. So really for a pond, that's a pretty deep, I'd say it's two to four acres in size. Uh, vegetation looks like we have some kind of just general pond weed. Uh, let me snag it with a jerk bait so I can try to show you guys. We've got this grass right here. I don't think it's uh, it's not milfoil for sure, whatever the heck this is, but it's a good green grass, keeping this water nice and clean. And yeah, it's pretty dang clean water. I'd say it's six plus feet visibility. And due to that and the water temperature, uh oh, I should have adjusted my brakes before throwing a light jerk bait. Due to that fact, I'm going to be throwing a suspending jerk bait as the water warms up a little more i might work my way to a vibrating jig or lipless crankbait but for now i think suspending jerk baits the best chance i have it's still morning time here the water hasn't warmed up a whole lot and so i could cover a ton of water with a vibrating jig but i don't have a whole lot of experience out here i don't know where the fish are going to be and so i'm just going to kind of take it slow and that's kind of one of the staples of you know winter pre-spawn pond fishing is it's kind of hard to go fast and have success Unless you have kind of a milk run of areas you know they live, I find it best to really slow down and really pick apart areas. And that's when you're going to catch your absolute tanks, is this time of year, fishing slow. Now one thing you've got to watch out for uh, in ponds with a jerkbait is that oftentimes you don't really have a whole lot of deep water to work with. So once my jerkbait kind of gets down to max depth, I'm actually jerking up instead of jerking down. Because if you jerk down, that jerkbait is going to keep digging deeper and deeper, you know, of course, until max depth. And you're oftentimes going to get snagged on grass a lot sooner than you want to. It'll kind of ruin a lot of your cast if you jerk down as opposed to up. And especially in clear water, you might think you have to be really close to a fish to get them to eat a jerkbait. That's just not true at all. I can tell you guys from <laughs> watching live scope that fish will follow a jerkbait from a long ways away. Um, I've, I've drawn fish from 20 feet of water up to almost the surface on a shallow jerkbait and they eat it. And so if this pond is 15 feet deep at max and I'm probably casting into, you know, eight to 10, if your jerkbait's going down three feet, that's plenty. You're getting that sucker plenty close to that fish. 
uh, if he's hungry enough to come eat it. So a little confidence for you guys there. If you're fishing a jerk bait, don't think that a shallow one can't get bit in the middle of the pond, because it definitely can. Today we have a four rating. It's going up to a 7.8. That's a kilo day right there. And that's because of this warm weather we're having right now has its effect on lakes and ponds these few days here. Um, all right, it still tells me the bass pattern is winter. So jerk bait, still a good idea there. I'm fishing weeds. Look at that. It says soft jerk bait, but I can throw a suspending jerk bait in that pattern as well. But yeah, drop shot and Nedvig or something I might have to go to out in the middle to get bit today. That's one. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my gosh, he pulled off. Tyler, you stinking goof. It felt like grass, so I didn't set the hook. And I lost me one. It's not ideal. Obviously, he didn't have it choked or else, no matter how I set the hook, he would have gotten in, so. He was right off the drop off though, as they are basically in every grassy pond. <laughs> There's not really a whole lot of differentiation there. If you got grass and you got an edge, the fish are probably gonna be on the edge. It's the only ambush point they got. Okay, you know what? Even though I think the jerk bait is the best lure for this water temperature, water color time of the year, that fish, the last fish there, ate it when I jerked it. So maybe these fish are willing to chase and eat something aggressive. So I'm gonna put on a red lipless that is the staple lure. I don't care if you're a pond, a lake, or a river. If the water's cold and the fish are gonna chase, throw a red lipless. So let's get it tied on, baby. A little bit of one knocker, two tap action. Get ourselves a yeet. With a lipless in these kind of ponds, if there's no sticks down there or stumps to get snagged on or lily pad stems, I let that boy sink all the way to the bottom. Usually one big rip to get it out of any grass and then retrieve it, for me at least, as slowly as I can while still feeling the vibration of that lure. We're back to where I lost one on the jerk bait. See if, because this area is shallower here, maybe the water's warmed up just a degree or two faster and these fish here are in more of a pre-spawn mood. The bass down there might need a drop shot or a Ned rig. But I'd really love to just you know, get our success on this first pond and move on. I'm rigging up a deadly, deadly. Look at that thing go. Not the ideal start to a 100 ponds video, but you know what? This time of the year can be a struggle. It can be humbling and uh, we're gonna move on to pond number 28. So pond number 28, very similar in, uh, in structure and cover to pond 27. I'd say though only about a third of the size, maybe, maybe half the size. And uh, I'm gonna start by doing the same thing I finished with, the lipless crankbait and the Ned rig. We have a lot of shallow, shallow water on that side, so it's possible the fish are pushed up there. And we got a decent amount of deep water, you know, six feet or so on this end. And the grass though does not grow as deep it looks. And if it does, it's more like kind of covering the bottom and not necessarily a grass edge. So it's kind of cool because the fish might not be stacked in a certain depth zone. They might be kind of all over the place because grass is covering the whole bottom. I'd actually prefer that over a grass line. Unless I'm in a boat, of course. Grass line is easier to dissect and uh, pinpoint fish. But if I'm just pond fishing, I'd rather, oh, that a fish? Grass. I'd rather the majority of my cast be over potentially productive water. Oh yes, that's not grass, <laughs> that's a fish. There we go, bring him in here. Bring him in here, you are not big my friend, but you're healthy, oh my gosh y'all. I wanna come show you guys on this camera here. Oh stop, stop, stop. Gonna get a treble hook in the finger. No, stop. I don't know if y'all can see the dimensions of this fish, but that is a very, very healthy half pound bass. So I appreciate you, friend. Don't tell your sisters. 
tell your mama to come see me. Success, folks. If you didn't know, in this series, catching one fish at a pond means success. But, especially if we catch one early, we ain't done. Let's catch some more. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Man, he ate, he ate it right at shore. I don't think he's hooked by much though, so playing him slow, playing him slow. Come on. Gosh, it's so crazy. I feel like I would have seen that fish. Feel like I would have seen him. He's not hooked by much. And we got some good momentum. Holy cow, look at his chunkiness. Oh, wow. Folks at home. I was just talking about the proportions of a lot last bass. Look at that one right there. Stinking chunk. My camera turn off? Oh, shoot. I just realized, folks, I wasn't even recording on that camera, which is definitely a big time bummer. There we go. There's the proportions I was talking about. Bing bong. Beautiful bass right there. Let's go. Yeehaw. I mean, both of those fish came within five feet of the shore. Not five feet, 10 feet. I bet this water is a tiny bit warmer because it's not as deep of a pond. Even like two degrees. Did you watch the final day with Junior? I did. He was talking about how it was two degrees colder in the back yeah. and they weren't eating as well. So it's very small differences. And so that right there, folks, is what you call a good old fashioned pattern. At least in my experience, when you get two bites in a relatively quick succession, doing the same thing in the same area, probably something you can replicate around the rest of the uh, the pond or lake that you're in. So we're going to move ourselves down about 20 yards and continue to put my lipless in what I think is the best place to catch fish, which is, you know, 15 to 20 feet off the bank and keep it in that strike zone for as long as I can. No. Oh gosh, I keep getting slammed. That's twice on that cast. <laughs> make that cast again. If you ever get bit, make the same cast again, gosh dang it. Because usually, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna say usually. Sometimes it can result in a fish. You know, I feel like one misconception about the lipless crankbait around grass is that you have to rip it out when that lure gets stuck. And it's actually not the case, especially I'm throwing I think, 15 pounds cigar basics fluorocarbon right now, which is a pretty strong line. And so if you're gonna get in some grass with the lipless, as you can see, I'm doing a little bit of rips, but I'm not like, like flutter spoon ripping the lipless. I'm doing more of just kind of like a faster reel with a little bit of a pole. And usually that is good enough to free the lipless out of the grass. Oftentimes, you'll, I'm sure you guys have experienced this. If you go to rip a lipless crankbait, it'll kind of like throw the bait up in the water column and then somehow the hooks will get stuck on the line and it'll basically mess up your entire cast unless, of course, your lure can get unsnagged from itself. But if I'm working a lipless, I keep my rod tip down, reel, like I said, as slow as I can while keeping it thumping, felt grass, kind of pull and or like speed up my retrieve, usually that's enough to get the lure freed from that grass. You don't need to do a huge rip every single time. Well, I've basically covered the entirety of the pond from one side with the lipless. And I can't get no more to bite. And there's more than two bass in here, I guarantee it. So we're going to get the Ned Rig. One of my favorite pond situations to throw the Ned Rig is actually this sort of pond right here, where grass is lining the entire bottom of the pond. It's not quite snot grass. That's horrible for any bottom contact lure. But just a little bit of grass that you can kind of get the Ned Rig stuck in, pop it out, just like a jig worm, for those of y'all who are in Minnesota. I don't do it a whole lot, because I don't have to usually. I can usually catch them early in the morning on top water and then a vibrating jig. But if you need to, get that Ned going. Okie dokie folks, couldn't catch any on the deadly Nedley. So we're gonna head to pond number 29. One thing I kind of want to point out is that all three of these have actually gotten progressively shallower. The max depth in the first one was 15 to 20. Max depth in the last one was probably 8 to 10. Max depth in this pond looks to be about maybe 6 feet, most likely 4 to 5 in most places. And one thing to be aware of this time of year is that as the water gets deeper, that body of water 
heats up and cools down a lot slower. And so a pond like this, it, instead of taking three days for warm weather to turn the bite into, from a winter bite into a pre-spawn, it'll take a day or a day and a half. And especially if you have a warm night, it can turn a pond like this into the pre-spawn just like that. But a cold front can also turn it back to winter just like that. So I think if there's some bass in here, which my buddy says there is, we're gonna catch them on a lipless since their water should be a degree or two warmer. I gotta get one of those water degree guns to shoot at the water, the temperature guns, so I can actually prove to you guys what I'm saying here. I'm gonna get one of those next next uh, Hunter Ponds video. Oh, he's got one. That was just telling you guys. It's maybe like 0.3 pounds. This pond is giving me fluke vibes. I'm gonna scratch everything that I just told you guys. I'm putting on a fluke. Let me tell you guys something. It is very hard to beat a weightless soft plastic jerkbait like this caffeine shad, the little four inch one, in any pond around the country, but especially shallow, shallow ones like this one. There's one. Oh, bring him in, baby. Bring him stinking in. Look at this Texas size share lunker right there. As in, this is a small share of a lunker. Maybe one day, my friend, you'd get that size, but probably not in this pond. Success, folks. We're doing it. It is not too cold to catch bass in ponds right now. It is possible to catch them on a lipless, on a vibrating jig, on a net rig, and of course, on my favorite, the pond staple. The best lure, I think, out there for pond fishing all year round all 50 states oh gosh and that is the soft plastic jerk bait let's get ourselves re-rigged here there we go hey oh this one might go half a pound maybe he ch choked it folks boom little chunker dunker beautiful fish there's something really really pretty folks about winter grass fish just a very defined lateral line beautiful fish and with that, boys and girls, we're going to end this 100 Ponds episode. You know what? I don't know if there's any bigger ones in here. I could sit here yanking half pounders all day on the uh, on the soft plastic jerky J. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. As always, I make it my goal here on this channel to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video, whether I'm here fishing 100 Ponds or out there fishing for 10 pound bass for 10 days in a row. Thank you guys for sticking with me through this season of life where there's not a whole lot of videos coming out. Don't worry, the spring, summer, and fall, we're gonna be hitting it really, really hard. And I'm excited for the growth on this channel. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.